Hello! In this video, I will explain to you one of the algorithms with the coolest names ever, HyperLogLog. Surprisingly, its goal is simply to count, or at least to approximately count. Imagine that we want to count how many people visit a website. Well, we can just maintain a counter with the total so far and increase it every time someone accesses the website. But matters get way more complicated if you want to count the number of unique visitors to our website. To avoid double counting, we need to keep a list of every past visitor. Then, every time you get a new access, we first check if the name of the person is in the list. Only if we do not find the name there, we add the person to the list and increase the number of unique visitors. This algorithm works, but it uses too much memory. Suppose each name takes only one byte of space. Then we'd need around one kilobyte of space for a website with a thousand visitors. With a million visitors, we would need around a megabyte of memory. And for a billion visitors, we'd need around one gigabyte of space. Even though a gigabyte may not sound like a lot nowadays, it is way too much memory to maintain a simple counter. The information we want is only the count, which is a number that may fit in a few bytes. Using a billion times this to store useless auxiliary information is not ideal. And there is also the time needed to look for a person in the list on every new website visit, which is definitely a lot longer than increasing a counter. On the other hand, HyperLogLog log counts the number of unique visitors using only memory in the order of log of log of the number of unique visitors. Log of log is a function that grows incredibly slowly. In practice, it means that the memory it needs to count a single unique visitor or a billion is almost the same, which is in the case of HyperLogLog, log around 2 kilobytes. Since there is no free lunch, the algorithm computes only an approximate count. Yet, this algorithm is incredibly useful and is used everywhere in practice. Reddit uses it to count visitors to a post, Facebook uses it to, on their databases, Google also uses it for many internal tasks, and these are only some of the examples. The secret sauce of HyperLogLog log is in the use of randomness. The way we introduce randomness to the problem is by using a hash function. In our case, a hash function is an algorithm that transforms each name to a random sequence of zeros and ones of some fixed size. That is, each character of the bit string has probability one half of being zero and one half of being one. Importantly, if we give it the same name twice, it should generate the exact same string. Besides this case, even if we input very similar names, the two outputs should be as independent as possible. There's a caveat here that's worth mentioning. In theory, such perfect hash functions probably do not exist, but in practice, we have hash functions that work well enough, so we can assume this perfect randomness without being too far off from reality. Thanks to the hash function, our task is slightly different now. We want to approximately count the number of unique random binary strings we see. To see why randomness is helpful, picture the following game. We flip a coin. If it turns head, we flip it again, and we keep doing this until we get a tail, when we just restart the game from scratch. By playing this game repeatedly, we get many coin flip sequences of different sizes. But the important fact is that we need to be very lucky to get a, a long sequence of heads. For example, the probability of getting exactly three heads is one half times one half times one half for the three heads times one half for the final tail. That is, the probability of getting this sequence is one over 16. This means that for every 16 attempts, on average, one sequence will have three heads and one tail. Another way to put it is that if someone shows you a sequence with exactly three heads, a good guess would be that they have tried the game at least 2 to the 4 or 16 times. In general, if someone playing this game says that the best streak of heads they got is of length L, on average, this will mean that they have tried around 
2 to the L plus 1 times to get this result. Now, back to the binary strings generated by our hash function. Since we assume these strings are random, we can use a similar reasoning. Just replace zeros for heads and ones for tails. Then, for each string, we look at the streak of zeros at the beginning and ignore the rest. Longer streaks of zeros are harder to get than shorter ones exactly in the same way as in our game with coins. So, when looking at these strings, the maximum streak of zeros we have seen so far can be also used to estimate the number of strings we have seen so far. For example, if at some point our maximum streak of zeros is 2, our guess would be that we saw 2 to the 2 plus 1 or 8 names in total, just as in the case of the coin flipping game. In fact, this method estimates the number of unique strings we have seen so far. Why? Well, when we receive the same name twice, the hash function maps it to the exactly same string. Since this does not affect the maximum streak of zeros, it is as if we ignored repetitions automatically. So our strategy is simply to keep track of the maximum streak of zeros seen so far. At any point, if the maximum streak is L, a good guess of the number of unique names we have seen so far is simply 2 to the L plus 1. But how much memory do we need to store L? Well, let's say that we want enough memory to count up to a number M. Here, we can take M to be really big, like a billion or even a trillion. Ok, so the estimate of our algorithm is always of the form 2 to the L plus 1. If we know that 2 to the L plus 1 is not going to be greater than M, this means that L, the value that we actually need to store, is no greater than log M. And to store any given number in the computer, such as log M, we need at most its length in binary which is also given by log. So to store the value that cannot be bigger than log m, we need only around log log m bits. We now have our approximate counter, this purple box, to estimate the number of unique strings using very little memory. But this algorithm has two drawbacks. It only estimates powers of two. Since powers of 2 get far really fast, it is very likely that the true value we want to estimate will not be a power of 2. Another problem is that this algorithm is too dependent on luck. If we get unlucky once and see a string with many zeros early on, our counting will be quite off. The solution to both of these problems turns out to be the same. Have many counters and average the result. Since the memory it uses is so small, we can even have around a thousand copies of our approximate counter while using very little memory. To build the many copies, we could have many dependent hash functions and get independent counters. But obtaining hash functions that are truly independent is usually hard. Instead, what we do is to have many approximate counters but randomly send each bit string to a different counter. To choose which counter, to send each string to, we use the first few bits, which are random. The remainder we send to the chosen approximate counter for it to do its trick. In the end, each counter will have its own maximum streak of zeros. We average the maximum streak of zeros seen by each counter and our estimate of the number of unique strings is 2 to the power of this average. A quick observation. This turns out to overestimate a bit the true quantity of unique elements. That is, it has a bias. But some mathematical analysis can give us a constant for us to multiply that removes the bias. And there we have it. This is the log-log algorithm. But the log-log algorithm can still be improved, as can its name. Its main problem is being too sensitive to outliers. If only a few of the counters are too big, it drives the whole average up by a lot. To solve this, the same creators of log-log proposed the super log-log algorithm, where we simply replace the average of all the counters by only the average of the top 70% counters, excluding the big outliers. Although better, this algorithm could still be improved. Not long after, they finally proposed hyper-log-log, 
the algorithm in its final form. The key difference is using the harmonic mean of the values instead of a simple average. The harmonic mean looks a bit ugly, but it is an elegant way to take a sort of average of the points that's not too affected by only a few big outliers. In the end, Hyperloglog -Log is a very easy algorithm to implement with very impressive performance. It can estimate sizes of around a billion with error within 2% of the true value with high probability, and now this using less than 2 kilobytes of memory. What is amazing! Well, that's it, I hope you liked this video. Write in the comments any questions you might have or any other algorithms you'd like to hear about. This video is my submission to the competition organized by Grant Sanderson from 3 Brew and Brown. It's safe to say that he inspired me to make this video. His channel is amazing and I just love how he's helping to push forward the community of math and CS explainers.